Bose Wave Radio with CD set new standards for sound in a compact unit when it was released about 25, 26 years ago, I guess, 1998, I think. Anyway, these are getting long in the tooth, and some of them are starting to have trouble reading some CDs. It's quite an easy fix. It's just only a couple parts that have to be changed on the CD servo board. I decided to do this as a separate video just to keep things moving along here. So here's part two for the one I fixed yesterday. This is a classic symptom. It takes a long time to read the disc, and some discs will read, some discs won't. Some discs will read a bit, and then they will skip. Others will play just fine. So this Bose will sometimes read some discs, and other times not. This is the one I repaired the drive on, but we, I know that there's other issues with this unit because sometimes it will just do random things. So anyway, uh, what I what I think what we're, we got a problem with is, is we may have some issues. It's, see, some discs it doesn't like. Other discs it plays fine. It doesn't like this disc that's all. Well, you know, it's well, you know, it. It's not in good shape. It's not in good shape, but it doesn't like this disc. Other discs play fine. It doesn't like this disc. And I, I think I know the reason why. You see, when I had this apart, this had a bunch of surface mounted caps on that digital control board, the servo board. And I would not be surprised if those caps are going bad. So this time we're going to open this unit up and do some testing and see whether I can get the servo board to track this CD. I like to see it tracking the CD in, in perfect condition. So I figured rather than do it all at once, because I fought with that mechanism for so long to get the alignment correct. And I got it playing pretty good, but not perfect. And I want it to be perfect because this bad boy is mine. So remove the transformer. This just makes it very easy to work on these units. And I find it's easier just to remove the entire display and just set it aside. That way I can just lift everything off the top rather than unplug it. It sure is a warm one today, that's for sure. And we aren't even into summer yet, but it's hot. It's a good thing I've got that air conditioner running in the shop here that's kind of keeping things bearable. And it, even with the air conditioning running, it's still pretty warm in here. Looking at the the uh, temperature gauge here, it says it's it says it's a uh, nice balmy 23 in the shop. Well, if I didn't have the air conditioning in here, it would be one heck of a lot hotter than that. Okay, I'm just going to set that aside. You'll see why in a minute. We're going to lift the the CD drive out of the way, and we're going to check some surface mounted caps. Whenever I see these bloody things here, I get nervous. So let's just unplug the drive. And try not to break anything in the process. We're going to bring the ESR meter out and we're going to measure some of these caps here and see if any of these caps are bad. My bet is that they're probably all bad, but we'll see. You notice the, the sign here stamped into the, the shield that says, do not reuse. Another indication of caps are going bad is that little IC in the bottom left corner, it gets hot we as like fire. To reuse things. Is there anything under here? I don't know if there's anything under this one. Are there any more caps under this? Let's just pop this top off and see if there's any under here as well. I see there's a few of them here. But is there others in here? And there are. There are more in here. So let's just uh, get the ESR meter out and see which ones are in the worst shape. Five point nine, probably bad. Point seven one, that one's probably okay. Two point five for a uh, what is that? Thirty three microfarad. That looks a little bit a little bit on the high side. Let's see, what are they? That's a 33. Is that a 33? That one's a 47. That one's a 47. 0.21. That one's probably okay. 9.9. 6.5. 6.5. 
11, that's getting up there. These two here are more than likely are the ones that are creating us the issue because they're these are a little bit higher than I would expect them to be. How about this one here? 1.9. It's a 10 microfarad. And that was probably okay. What about this one over here? The 10 microfarad. 13. Mm, that's a little high. 6.2. It's okay. This one here is 7.7. Uh, .7. For a 47 microfarad, uh, I'm going to say it's a little bit on the high side. If I can get my probe in here to measure it. 7.7, .7, yeah, so... There's a few here that are bad, but the ones I think... I don't think the ones under here are going to be causing our issue. Um, this is more of the interface and the, the DA conversion and so forth. The servo is over here. This is the servo I see here. And what I did notice is that this gets is getting pretty warm. So I'm going to pop the top on and I'm going to ignore those ones and I'm just going to concentrate on the ones over on this side that um, the uh, ESR is, is really quite quite high on here. Now the ones I'm looking at is uh, this one here. We'll change that one. Okay, that's a 47 microfarad and that should be about 2.2, you know, between 1.6 and 2.2 depending on the voltage of this thing. But it should be, it should be down in you know, that 2, 2 ohm range or less. Say this one here looks to be 0.7, that's fine. That one's good. This one here at 10, a 10 microfarad measuring 10, that's a little bit on the high side. So that one, these two for sure, and possibly this one over here. Was it the one? 11, yeah, possibly these three will change. The other ones look to be not too bad. Okay, let's change out these three and I'll just put regular caps in and uh, we'll see if it improves the readability on that disc that was questionable. The one with all the scratches. If I can make that one play, it'll play anything. That one's probably okay. It's a one microfarad and it's looking okay. Um, reading wise, even, even at, uh, at 35 volts, it would say 14 ohms would be considered to be good. And uh, this one here is uh, my phone's ringing. 11, so I think we'll leave that one alone. I'll just do the other two. So the first one I'll take out is this 10. Get some light on here so I can see what I'm doing. We'll nip this one out. The reason I do this is I don't want to apply any force at all to the traces. I don't want to damage the traces. This was a 10 microfarad. I've got a little low profile one to put in place of that one. That's one. And the other one's just 47 over here.
Ouch. Ouch. All right. Let's uh, plug the CD drive back in and see whether uh, I've made any improvement. Or did I make it worse? I don't like working with this ribbon cable. It is really not in good shape. It's not going to plug in many times more before something peels off on it, that's for sure. Makes me nervous. Power to the unit and uh, see whether I've made any improvement to read that problematic disk. Okay, uh, two caps replaced. Let's see how it uh, reads the disk now. See how quickly it reads. beep was my meter shutting off by the way. disc and see how we can handle this one with all the scratches in it. That's uh, track camp a little better. We'll put the um, MP3 disc in. But as you can see, it's uh, it's playing this disc perfect now. Right to the end of the tracks. See if it goes all the way to the end. I think there's 20 tracks on here. Responding a lot quicker than uh, it was before changing out those two caps. And this is the MP3 disc, CDRW. Put it in a, a random play mode. Now it's going to go to track mode too. See how much quicker it's going to load now than before. Those two caps on the board, they were. Um, I'll tell you what, what numbers they were because I, I had the other machine still in pieces I haven't put together yet so. Oh, they're not even labeled, but anyway, 
there's the board from the other unit the two that you need to change that one and that one okay those are the two that need to be changed to fix the servo board There we go, all back together, reading that scratched up disc. So if you got one of these units that's not reading some discs and reading others, check for those two caps. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you in the next one, bye.